This is probably going to be episode 37. Yes. I think it has to be. We've been, we've had a good three week run. We, we've been hustling. This is a day off. And I was just thinking about how I love the fact that um, we do a podcast on our day off. I know, because it's like it truly doesn't feel like work. No, it's no. so fun. Yeah, we were just doing the uh, the fish. I, I take such pride in being the type of person that could have a podcast set up and ready to go and then says, let's do fish and smoke first. Yeah, and so for those who don't know what that is, it's a yoga pose where you use yoga blocks. Well, you don't, act, you don't not always, but an assisted fish is where you use yoga blocks and, and backward bend over the blocks when you're lying down. And it just feels so nice when you get the blocks in the right place and you can fully release into those blocks. And we just like forward bend so much. And when you're in this position, you feel like you forget how much you're bending forward and how good it feels to bend backwards. Mm, so we did that. And especially because when you're looking forward on your phone so much. Yeah. Um, but guys, welcome to another episode of Discipline Stoners. <laughs> <laughs> And for those of you listening with only audio, my Spotify lovers, <coughs> sponsored by Coughing. <coughs> Thank you. Um, for those of you who don't know, who's just listening on audio now for this first time, we decided to start doing a video component, which is on Winnie's YouTube channel, which I'll, is our YouTube channel. I'll just say that when he says we decided to do a video component, it was very much this guy's decision over here. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if this is gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I already have her password. <laughs> it's happening. But um, yeah, this has been really amazing. We've luckily had a couple episodes stored that we needed to catch up and we thought were really, really great conversations. So those were the last couple ones that we released since the Humble episode. Yes. And. Uh, I've been trying to get like more guests and nothing has been like aligning yeah to be perfectly honest like in terms of timeline or or just you know the specific requests and the directions and conversations I wanted to have and along with all of this just the world has been in such a hyper 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 sensitive state hyper sensitive state I've just swung the pendulum back and forth and been up and out and at him and it's just like so much life has happened since we've actually recorded a fresh episode. Yes, that's just, true. Just us. Yeah, I yeah. know, I know, I because we've been nuts. You had a photo shoot last Monday. We been nonstop. Often work through our weekends, and we do. What that. is a weekend? Yeah, exactly. Our weekends isn't necessarily even on the traditional like weekend, but we do work through it. But we do really also think it's important to like take downtime. But just like sometimes when things arise, you just don't have you, like the you didn't plug in the downtime. <laughs> so yo, that tastes so fucking good. So good. Miracle is that the mac? Cookies, yeah. That is the uh, beautiful fluffy bud. Miracle alien cookies. High rib from Lotus Toronto. Fucking wow. Okay, you've probably done this already, but welcome to Disciplined Stoners. My yeah. name is Winnie. I am 11, and we love talking about cannabis, mindfulness, and fucking whatever spews out. So if you haven't already, <clears throat> go get your joints. Get your bongs, get your vapes, get your, get your pens, get your oils. Um, Mushrooms. Topicals. Mushrooms, if that's Acid. your thing, that's fine. And uh, happy, happy podcast, Get your everybody. Drag. We're Get happy to be back with you. <coughs> yeah, we Although love doing this. it feels this. like we never left, but no. for us it feels we like... We never left you, but you left us for a minute. No, I'm just kidding. Check this out. This is the, the toad. Yeah, I like the toad. Oh, did you put that incense on? I love the smell of it. I don't think you did. I should put it on. I tried to, though. It's There's a little... Uh, burnt little tip there. You started it? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right. So now that they're lit up, we were chatting today about how 
It's so interesting to be a human being yeah. because ultimately what I've come to believe, and I will say we, but like not it, whenever I say we, it doesn't always necessarily mean weed. Ev. <laughs> weed. But what I've come to believe is that like the universe is running this shit. Like collective consciousness is running this shit. You mean shit. running it like is, is, it, is, is it, right. Yeah. So, so like ev it's it's living through everyone's unique experience and experiencing yes. it all simultaneously that's why we are all one we are talking to it through each other so from <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so from its perspective not the human perspective from its universal perspective it like doesn't care if you perceivably fail or succeed it's during the journey. your time here. It's the expression. It's the, the idea. Yeah, because it can just do it again and again as many times as it wants. So, so it's that's not like scared. The, kind of the harsh reality for humans essentially here is to like understand that nothing matters. <laughs> and at the same time though, we get this opportunity to make things matter and create things that matter to us and humans, have meaningful humans are meaning making machines yeah we associate like dude even like there's good sides and bad sides to that like bad sides to that <clears throat> me and my mom got evicted when i was a teenager and i i used this money i had to like buy myself a new outfit from winners and it was red and black and I was homeless for like a week with my mom in the streets of Vancouver and I had to wear this outfit and red and black would haunt me. Yeah. So like these She hated mean, red and black. Oh, so scary, right? And then just because of what it meant. And I was vulnerable to that and I kept letting that like fear-based trigger happen every time that, you know, that would inspire that thought or meaning just because I associated with it. And then I realized like, yo, you can take responsibility for this, flip this. And then I bought those red pants in LA and I became red as fuck and I owned it and I loved it and I sat with it and I created from it and I spread love into it and then it evaporated and then so did those pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking... We had these beautiful red joggers that were hot. I missed them just because they were hot. Yeah. And uh, and then he had them for one time. He showed me them, and we don't know where they went after that. <laughs> wormhole, wormhole in this place, gone. Does anyone else have gone. wormholes? <coughs> like we all have experienced the, the laundry wormhole with this box. That everyone knows what we're talking about for that. But do have do you lose other things? Do they come back after a while? Yeah, sometimes they do if you believe that they do or yeah. that they can. You just got to be open to the fact that you're not seeing <coughs> the frequency in which they exist at the time you're convinced that they are lost. Okay, so what about this, though? Because Eleven and I recently lost our favorite pokey, like poker for weed. Oh, yeah. And and then it came back really briefly, and then we lost it again really quickly, like after it came back briefly, and then we just found it again recently, like two two days ago. Yeah. And in my heart, truly, I never felt like it was lost, even though Neither I couldn't I. find it. Totally true. So what's up with that though? I never felt like it was lost, truly. But why couldn't? Why didn't we find it earlier? And that's where it's like. <clears throat> Is it science like based matter or is it creationism? So it's like because we weren't convinced it was lost, we created it again in our experience because we believed it was so. Or is it like that we felt that it wasn't lost because it wasn't because it was still here so we could feel it? Who knows? I don't know. <clears throat> but I was sitting on the couch and it was like in the couch. <laughs> Obviously, a stoner would lose their fucking pokey in the couch. Like, check their I first checked stupid. in the couch. I know, but that's the trippy thing is when you thought you checked and then you didn't, but you did, but you didn't. You Cause know what you I'm kind, saying? Because I kind of think it. Basically, I'm basically saying, like, maybe I did think it was lost and I was trying to, like, force myself to think otherwise. But I don't think that's true. Basically, basically. You said I got some plans then. I would normally admit if I really thought that was true. I don't think that's true in, in this case, but then, you know, who knows? 
So how has life been for you? What have we learned? We've really refocused the compassion. That's been huge, dude. Um, that Greg Braden quote inspired the fuck out of me with this separation I was seeing with this silliness <coughs> that we're all being faced with as humans, not only how to stay physically safe, but how to stay mentally well. Most of the susception to any disease is due to stress and, you know, inflammation due to that. Um, so whatever side you're on currently, that shit one could change tomorrow based on your emotional attachment to the circumstance. Ralph. And two, shouldn't be more important than staying connected with people. It shouldn't take priority, whatever side you're on. Yeah, we had a bit of a rocky moment. Couple weeks, honestly. Not like consistently, but just no. like, whoa, like, <clears throat> shit came up and then oh man that threw us off track and we disagreed and then blah, and then this happened and then just friends canceling friends like crazy stuff it's like this shit is like making its way into actually being more serious than necessary because i get all caught up in my head especially with silly things like politics proclaiming bizarre measures that are unnecessary that only trigger those of us who could fall into the category of conspiracy theorists, you know, could only trigger our imagination further by such sloppy, you know, you know shit <laughs> and circumstances. You know I, I really so think that- You gotta save yourself from going there, essentially. Yeah. And I think like we're- and that's through compassion. <laughs> too much generality going on so you know on one side it was like you know these people are fucking psycho conspiracy theory theorists and on the other side it was like these people are fucking sheep you know like there was too much back and forth like general blanket statements <coughs> going on and that's for, so emotional for yeah it's so human you know this shit is flexing you like remember it's never the thing at hand that's going to be remembered in the judgment it's it's the how you reacted to it did you stay cool you know or did you shoot your fellow man down or whatever you know shit is trippy dude it's all like a series of, of tests <laughs> Yeah, and also just, like, remember to forgive yourself, like, as quickly as possible. Like, I think we're all losing our shit a little bit here. And, like, totally. I think we're having forgive moments yourself. of um, just uh, unusual character behavior, you know, that we... Because it's unusual. These circumstances are unusual. And whether they are, you know, brilliant political play-out plans that to capitalize on whatever eventually <coughs> or immediately or whether it's legitimately smart people in their fields trying and missing and trying because we're all human and we're all trying our best like whatever way you cut it there's not much you can do by getting all worked up about it anyway like if you're on one side there are conservative measures you can take, like writing your people and using your voice, like Dr. Sam says, and if you're on the other side, you can just be patient and fall in line when it's your turn to do the thing. And that's it, like everyone's gonna do what they want and what they, what they believe is true and right for them because everyone's situation is different. So I even got lost in the sauce and got judgy and it was hilarious and I made some freestyles about it and took shots and expressed myself with my art, but at the end of the day, I was open to having some conversations that were a little more, you know, forgiving on both sides and a little more straight down the general barrel. It's like, <clears throat> you know, there's always gonna be that 10% 10% extreme, but like the general movement and like, you know, I think uh, I think we're all kind of trying our best and no one I really knows what I think if we could actually understand <laughs> each other more, we would realize that we are are all closer to wanting the same thing than not 
but you know we're being presented with you what know, we think kind different of, options <clears throat> yeah like yeah. kind of extreme and it's all based on our realities too right and our bad habits and and it's a it's a super reflection of all our weaknesses so a bunch of insecurities come up like right away like with the virus thing it's like immediately if you're an unhealthy person and you're already aware of that and you feel guilty about that and now this is calling you out like super loudly like that would fucking heighten your blood sugar just right there just having to have that convert or your blood pressure sorry your blood sugar um you know so finding those elements outside of yourself and you know realizing you know one's privileges from from where they're talking from and and yeah, dude, we all got we all got the right to feel however we want to feel. But I think where everything goes wrong is when you try to start to convince others of anything. It, it would just drive you nuts. It would be like it, you can't you can't control yeah. anyone else. It's everyone's gonna do what they want to do with their own body and fuck off. <laughs> and like shit, like that shit has to be the case all the time. And if I'm Mister Mindfulness. Why? I think that you have to be open to having the conversations. Like, I think that it's not just like, I believe this and like, now go fuck off. Like, I'm going to sit here in this belief. Like, I think it's more like... No, I'm saying as far as respecting others go. Like, yeah. yeah, you can be open all you want. But I'm saying that if someone like has a position on something, like trying to like convince them otherwise or, or getting emotionally attached to somebody you know <clears throat> the expectation of anything from another person as far as it comes to their like personal beliefs and liberties or whatever it's like that shit will fuck fuck you up every time like you know trying to impose on somebody else's shit like change anyone's mind yeah you can't really you can influence people but like and if you're asked for your opinion on something you can share it but like I, I see a lot going wrong when one party needs the other party to believe something that they believe. And that's well, been the case I with just, religion I, forever. I think I, I hope I posted it <clears throat> so like I can Like there's wars share because it. of like semantics. Yeah, okay. Like come on, so it's silly. So I just posted this this The Bible's today. just a fucking guide to the inner temple anyway, guy. Come on. <laughs> I just posted this today. What'd you post? <clears throat> What'd you post, mom? It's a quote. By, um... A quotable, postable. All right, you wrote them all. Speak them out, spoke them to all. <coughs> Jiddu Krishnamurti. So Can I'm, you do I'm, the English version? I'm not. <clears throat> Is there a translation? That's the per that's the <coughs> name. Oh, sorry. Who is it? Jiddu Krishnamurti. <coughs> okay, I don't know this person, but some word up, shout out. Someone posted a quote by this person that Shout out. really, really resonated. And then I posted it. So it's... Love to that person. By listening to yourself, you learn infinitely more than by listening to a lot of other people, including me. That's it. Because a guru would never say that y you need them. A yeah. real motherfucker that wants you to see your own light. Like, go with him. Yeah. Shut up for a minute. Yeah, I think a real guru isn't looking for people to stay. Or follow. To hang around. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, in and out. Let's <coughs> go. Who else can I help Change some lives. <laughs> enlightenment. <laughs> and then while the guru struggles with his own human experience. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, I mean, speaking of gurus and master monks and stuff, that, you know, on topic to what we were talking about. Greg Braden's having a meeting with the like master monk somewhere in uh, Tibet, and uh, right. What? Did I pronounce that right? I'm high as fuck. <laughs> Miracle and Lily cookies, yes. yes, and Blue Dream. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. And and he he asked the master monk. I think because Greg Braden's really a kind of like a quantum physics guy in a big way. And a huge proponent to that conversation. So he says to the monk, <clears throat> he's trying to get him to talk about the quantum field. I believe. I believe it's his intention. Like, that's kind of what he studies. 
He's like, what is the force that connects us all? Because it's like, you know, trying to get him to answer that. And then the monk, here's the translation from his translator. That he takes a minute and then he gets the translator to rephrase it again. They have a little back and forth. The monk chills for a minute and says, compassion. And because he, he just like blew minds right there because literally the energy that connects us all is like love, you know? energy so you tap into that oneness so he gave us the key to oneness like feel the connection to the quantum everything by having compassion for everything by realizing you are everything and that energy field is love so he taught us what it is and how to tap into it one word <laughs> and the simplicity of that and the masterfulness of that understanding and the perspective that you can move forward in life where it's your top priority to not take anything personally is the is the just the best the best tool the best tool and then also know that like you're for sure gonna take some more shit personally all day like, but you're like, going but it's not but, the, not but the anymore. one time that you don't though you're just like oh yeah that felt so good yeah because i'm gonna do that again next time i feel like i'm being judged i'm not gonna take it personally Oh, it's like I just took a shit emotionally, you know? It's like, oh. And that so actually good. is a good skill to practice if you're someone like me who, like, assesses scenarios that aren't necessarily, uh, is not correct. Like, I'll <laughs> assess something and be like, oh, this person, because of what's going on, this person over here who I think I've made eye contact with um, thinks A, B, and C about me. And in order for them to like think that I'm a decent person, I better do uh, E, F, or G. Um, so these and, are long and, equations. And these are, yeah. And so, so to like practice that, uh, like not taking it personally, like seeing a situation, like having that rip still what through my head. What she's saying is she likes everyone to like her. <clears throat> but and now I'm saying like now because of that. I'm saying you're in that situation and and that scenario still like rips through my brain totally. like it still happens like I still feel that like oh maybe I and then I'll, I'll have that like moment because I've been practicing it of being like oh that's not my work <laughs> it's not my work uh, to like to right. feel what they're feeling it's not my work to judge what this scenario is or how anyone might be feeling it in it in this moment and um, it's actually been really liberating and like it feels really nice and good and I think it um, is adding to my confidence. So. I think it's adding to your confidence too in a great way because you just save yourself the work. It's mentally fatiguing to yeah. constantly play out these scenarios in your head and then <clears throat> it's even worse for your ego to constantly be in a position where you think you're right. Like if you look at like how the the big names navigate it's a lot of counsel being open to counsel like it's like hey i want to like hire a really good person at this thing so when i start my store they'll give me consulting like consulting firms make mad money like you know like who, like who's sourcing these great minds out like humble leaders like real people who really want to get informed that's why you can't really like, really get attached to like either side you know everything could change like in a, in a split second then you could be on the other side and like yeah getting too too deep but you know that's just the human experience too you know falling into our identity so deep to where we believe that this is reality like this is a oh a simulation of your thoughts your combination of your experiences and your expressions and ideas to fuel like fuel emotional fuel yeah, and for everything that you've gone through personally in your own life, like, would you really expect anyone else to understand how you might be feeling or what series of events you cannot equate so, why you might be feeling in any certain moment? So you can't even expect compassion because expectation, you know, so we say like compassion is the key to have for others you got to give it you cannot expect compassion because you can't idealize somebody else's life in a split second right you can make some assumptions but like you can't fully understand the 
series of ideas about themselves and how they see the world. You don't know someone's history and passive experiences. Like that's their right to have a human experience. Yeah. That's their story. They get to write their own script. That's don't muddle around in there. Don't influence people's shit. If they want to come to you and like, or they fuck with your work, like that's what's cool about doing art. You can express yourself, put it out there, makes a statement, people like it, or they don't, they resonate with it, it's cool. Fair game, right? That's selective, that's not an asset they can check out or not, you know? But if it's like a personal, you're experiencing people, you know, you meet someone, cool, they have a different opinion, like cool, right? Like cool, like what brought you there? Like I'm just understanding, like it's okay to even keep the conversation going, like oh, that's interesting, I feel differently, but like cool, that's all good. I'm, you know, we're all on our own journey. That's really nice it feels good it reminds me of traveling it reminds me of being on tour and you know someone can be taking you out for dinner and you realize <clears throat> that you don't agree with everything <laughs> that this person thinks and like it's like a very still nice flattering experience but then you're just like oh, okay cool like we'll probably you know yeah we're not gonna like and i just want to say <clears throat> that this does not apply with racism what <laughs> what, what happened? Like when okay, two people, that. when you're like out with someone and you like think differently and you're like, okay, cool. Like you can still like be calm and like. Oh, like... You, we can't be friends with racists. No. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I just wanted to make that like very, very clear where we stand I can't, on that. I cannot be friends with racists, yeah. no. Yeah. Like... Or anyone that like hits women or kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's, there's pretty, like, there's, there's, I just want to be very clear. I feel like, you know what I've learned? Yeah, there's some unforgivable lines and that's okay. Yeah. 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 It, like if some dude was like, fuck, I love two-year-olds, it would be like, you need to go get psychiatric help and I can't hang out with you. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if you don't do it, then we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> so Ev just started um, dabbing. dabbing. Shout out Seven Pipe. They shot me. Fucking Jeffrey is a just a prince. Owner of Seven Pipe, the original twisty glass blunt pipe. This is the proper one, gold tip. Uh, so I honestly like. Uh, and it comes with an extension that you can dab. And what is this here? Shattered. Okay. So there's a couple different kinds of concentrates. There's shatter, there's resin, there's wax, and there's rosin, I think. Diamond dust or diamond clusters. Yeah, and clusters. they're um, essentially all doing the same thing is what I've learned. <coughs> they're all an extract, yeah. yeah. They're just at different forms because they react differently at different temperatures. And depending on what you know solutions that you use to uh, get them out, definitely looks like crack. Like people are like, is that flattened out crack? It looks like dried honey. And like some motherfuckers could dab, this is like probably like one third of a gram um, of shatter in my hand right now, folks. And I'm going to dip a fair amount. Um, I put it in the sweet little blessed espresso cup that we make our espresso in. And um, yeah, I started dabbing because you know why? <clears throat> it's good. My mom's going to hate the way it looks and that's hilarious because she's like, it looks like drugs. <laughs> drugs. I um, know. It does look like drugs. It does. And, but like fair enough. But like honestly, it's the best form of cannabis for daily smokers like me because you skip all the carcinogens. And then you get all the other benefits, anti-inflammatories, THC, and you don't have cognitive to smoke a whole joint either. Like this, like the very small amount that I, I put out is like probably like two joints. Like wow. that's probably like two joints. Yeah. And like I'm I'm just like, I'm gonna let that chill for a minute, because even <laughs> the little bit that I just had and those other two joints that we smoked, yeah. I'm nice and toasty. <laughs> But I just wanted to get that ready for next time. You know nice. how you do yourself favors like that? I yeah. love to, we call it me and Winnie of this thing. When did we start that? 703? We use our apartment numbers for uh, timelines. Uh, what do you, I don't know where you're talking about. Um, do our future self a favor. Oh, like yeah. future me is gonna love this. Yes, yeah, yeah. we must have started at 703. That's when we started to get uh, disciplined. Yeah. And because, stoned. Disciplined yeah. Stoned. Yeah, because we were like, well, for me personally, I was like, listen, when 
if you're going to get high and procrastinate and not do your shit, you're not okay. getting high. So uh, I was like, okay, I'd be high and I'd be in this predicament where I'm like, I could just eat a bag of chips and play some video games. <laughs> Remember in Vancouver when we hung out with our wonderful friend Troy? Yeah. And we just like got high and like we ate a whole bag of chips? <laughs> yes. And I was like, holy shit, that felt so good. <laughs> That was like a blowjob for the whole body. <laughs> totally. It's like warmth right down to your toes and it was summertime in Vancouver and we were like in our early 20s and it doesn't matter even what you eat. We yeah. were tripping. That was still rare for us. And yeah. Troy is so like, oh, fuck it. Let's just do it. Shout out Troy. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, so um, then, yeah, we came up with like, Think about how future you is really gonna like love this shit. Like making my lunch the night before. Ugh. Future me, oh yeah, it wants to get it on with past me. What about you? What has future uh, past you done for future you that just jingles your bells? Tickles my tonsils and testicle torture. No, not torture. Ton, ton, terrific. Thunderous. <laughs> t t Charlie, terrific Charlie. Tiny. Okay. Uh, lately, it's been the I am affirmations to the Wayne Dyer God uh. frequencies. And the night before, you go into sleep and <gasps> oh, you just wake up with a happier heart. I think we did talk about <laughs> starting a bedtime um, regime, right? I think, I don't know, I can't remember what episode we're at. I'm fucking high right now. <laughs> okay, if we didn't talk about this already, we have started a bedtime mm, regime. So in the morning so time, good. we've developed this, this like thing that we do where we meditate for sure. We listen to affirmations for sure. We listen to uh, inspirational content of our choice for sure. And we journal for sure. Um, and... That just now is like in, in the repertoire. That's like brushing your teeth. That's putting on pants before you leave. Like that, that's just happening now. Yeah. So now we're in the process of developing a nighttime routine. And <laughs> I'll say it, feels so good. it does feel so good, but I'll say that I've. It was tough. I've surprised myself. You're still better than I am with it. But like <laughs> the other night, like I woke up at like, I don't know, four in the morning and like my journal was like next to me. <laughs> it was like asleep on the bed. Good, good. And I had done it, but just Cause like here's the asleep. important thing. You gotta, <laughs> first of all, you can fall asleep, get up and do it. Do it. Like put on the sounds and do it and you'll feel so much better about it. It's the, it's the reward thing. But also it's just shifting your brain to getting into that space to having the intention to do it. So only if you get the you're right, I am powerful i am i am grateful i am i am abundant i am and then you fall asleep at like you just bright and even if you don't even get to writing the fact you got your journal out and you shift your head to that instead of the bullshit that you used to do that's way better and i gotta say it felt like i was having time wrestled away from me too another fucking another i gotta sit down for this but another then process and uh, but then yes dude yes yeah. that's not insane to ask start and finish with something come on before i and go I, into and i saw results one night after another and you it could you could so say it's a coincidence good. but like didn't do do, do these no you were for a one real night. bitch i was a real brat i wake up to her mad at me too often <laughs> But he wakes up at like 11, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just figured out why. No. When I No, when I'm up at 6, Winnie fucking loves it. She's like, I'm so impressed. And I'm like. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not like that. It's weird. <laughs> what was I talking about now? Now you took it down. It's distracting me and the audience. <laughs> Shout out Seven Pipe. It's going to be hilarious because this isn't actually going up on YouTube. Yes, it is. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't want it up with me smoking. <coughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Can we start our OnlyFans? Yeah. We're going to start our OnlyFans. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god, this is where the fucking video component lives on OnlyFans. That's brilliant. <laughs> <coughs> yes! Great. <coughs> and check out OnlyFans. Check out OnlyFans at OnlyFans. I mean, I yeah. guess it does, it can live there. It will. Yeah. It's good as done. Great. <laughs> 70-30. That's our business deal. For you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I produced this. <laughs> oh, you know what it might be time for? A Is it? Really? Already? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> I just feel have like... Have you only had any special <laughs> moments over the past week? Um... Yeah, we were talking about some of them, and then I can't remember. Oh yeah, doing our our routine. Yeah, so I didn't do it as a brat, and then I got out of it, and then the next night I did it, and I was awesome the next day. And then I was like, whoa, that's kind of crazy that it was that immediate. Um, which it was an immediate, like you could feel it. Yeah, you have a lighter heart. You just feel better about yourself. Yeah. So dope. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea to, at nighttime, you know, take 10 minutes to dream about, like, who, appreciating who you are, but also dream about the qualities that you'd like to, you know, insert and, and absorb <clears throat> into your body and move forward in life with. Oh my God, can I also share something else I've been doing uh, that I've added on to my process in the day? Yeah. <clears throat> Nam yang ho renge kyo, 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 nam yang ho renge kyo. Buddhist chant that like protects your heart feels real good. Cool. Do you have a, a translation or? No. I think it's just the sonic impulses, the sounds. Oh. Could you please pass me the life book, the gold life, the, the expensive one, the thousand dollar book? <laughs> Thank you, thousand dad. Do you realize that this iridescent bismuth cannabis leaf is acting as a joint holder right now yeah it's beautiful that's brilliant oh mm, it's so nice in these headphones this is very nice <clears throat> the art of traveling from the art of living when you pack your bags to explore the beauties of your own country or to travel around the world consider these keys to a happy journey Travel lightly. You are not traveling for people to see you. Travel slowly. Jet planes are for getting places, not seeing places. Take time to absorb the beauty and inspiration of a mountain or a cathedral. Travel expectantly. Every place you visit is like a surprise package to be opened. Untie the strings with an expectation of high adventure. Travel hopefully. To travel, hopefully, wrote Robert Louis Stevenson, is better than to arrive. Mm. <clears throat> travel humbly. Visit people and places with reverence and respect for their traditions and ways of life. Definitely. Travel courteously. Consideration for your fellow travelers and your hosts will smooth the way through most difficult days. That's facts. Talk about compassion. and Staying connected. Travel gratefully. Show appreciation for the many things that are being done by others for your enjoyment and comfort. Travel with an open mind. Leave your prejudices at home. Travel with curiosity. It is not how far you go, but how deeply you go that mines the gold of experience. Thoreau, though, wrote a book about Tiny Walden Pond. Travel with imagination. <laughs> Thoreau wrote a big book about a tiny Walden pond. I don't know that reference. Before our time. 
travel with imagination. As the old Spanish proverb puts it, he who would bring home the wealth, he who would bring home the wealth of the Indies must carry the wealth of the Indies with him. Wow. That's beautiful. Travel fearlessly. Banish worry and timidity. Timidity. Be, don't be a timid little bitch. The world and its people. <laughs> Banish worry and timidity. The world and its people belong to you just as you belong to the world. Travel relaxed. Make up your mind to have a good time. Let go and let God. Travel patiently. It takes time to understand others, especially when there are barriers of language and custom. Keep flexible and adaptable to all situations. Travel with the spirit of a world citizen. You'll discover that people are basically much the same around the world. Be an ambassador of goodwill to all people. And that's page 11 right there. Nice. The art of traveling and the art of the living. Mm, art, art I think that's uh, where... Wilfred A. Peterson. I think when we travel again, I think that's automatically something that will happen. All these things? Yeah. Oh, I know, for sure. We have so much more gratitude for each other already. The call for appreciation to service people and frontline workers. Like, honestly, this has all been, like, pretty good overall. <laughs> Which is a fucked up, like, perspective to have, actually. But yeah. it feels the best. It feels the easiest. Have faith in moving forward however people decide to handle their lives. Hopefully it's with a lot of compassion and a lot of intention to connect again and just embracing all the luxuries that were luxuries in the first place, like going to bars and hanging out and being able to have lunch. I love, I, dude, I travel purposely all time to like do that and just to go to another fucking country or city and like have lunch. Like, you know, like you just be out around people, be in the mix. This is where the chance of life happens. This is where you meet people. This is where connections and relationships and projects sometimes are even formed just by random meetings, you know, collaborations. Like these things are important. They're important to us, and but they were luxuries to begin with. So, you know, it's gonna be nice to really dive back in. And I think it is honestly happening a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so. Right on, power to you. In Sage other your bodies. News, in other news. <clears throat> in other news, Eleven and I began watching a reality show. I was gonna bring it up too. Oh my god! But <clears throat> we're taking things to the next level. <laughs> Bryce, <laughs> this fucking show, Gigolos. This showcase show, Gigolos. Yeah, it's awesome. It's fucking. We hate reality television. Yeah. But one guy, he's, he talks into his mouth and They're really is just... an intellectual. It's like a Michael, Michael Bublé owned a gas station. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm 6'6". Six, six. I don't like to work out. I like to do the voices of new I don't things. know how well these guys have actually know each other. And one guy thinks he can rap. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this guy's like, yo, I'm Nick. I got a gigolo style and a gigolo flavor, <laughs> gigolo man and a gigolo swagger. <laughs> oh no! I think I think it did start like <coughs> fuck. Maybe Bryce is like a great guy. 2011 or 2012. <clears throat> so I think we, we love do it. Keep that in mind. Guess what? We're not even past the whole fucking season. There's sex in every episode. Yeah. Explicit sex, crazy situations. These people who sign waivers to be on this show. Oh my god, guy, you're you're on this fucking show and you're hiring this guy to fuck your wife and like this is crazy. And one lady hired all four or five guys to bang her. And she's like, if I have one dick in my ass and my pussy in my hands and my mouth, that's awesome to me. She's like, I think I'm underutilizing. I should get five for the other hand. And she was just like a normal lady and just like wanted this fantasy and like did it. And like you realize people have fantasies and it's like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. And it's like, good for you. And especially having the means to hire a professional. I know it looks so cool. Huh. Fuck. You only fans people are lucky. <clears throat> It's gonna go on YouTube just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Some part. we fucking love this show and it's we're not even done the first season and there's six seasons. And they're a manager guy. 
He's like fucking <laughs> broke that dragon. Winnie just broke that dragon. And... No, it wasn't me. I was moving around. It's okay. It's all good. That was just. I find that fascinating just because. Just broke the dragon head. I was appreciating how cool it looked. Just shattered that. <clears throat> now we got to see though. We got to see what was what was inside it. Wow. Wow. And we just cleaned up today too. Two of it. Are you okay? Yeah, it just felt like glass, or felt like there may be shards or something. Should I get a? a I should. No, we're fine. Okay. I don't think there's anything there. I think it's all in your head. <laughs> remember that gorilla song? I remember that it's all in your head. <clears throat> I'm happy. I'm feeling great in the sunshine. In the bank of these waves. In the future. It's coming on. I'm happy. I'm feeling great in the sunshine. What is. What? Yo, we listened to Whitney Houston today. We did. And. It was fucking. Yeah, that one that's like close on the line. Why are you getting up? Higher. This is so clear. <coughs> this is a shock today. Just like this morning, we were having like insane deep. <laughs> like inspired conversation <coughs> i'm not sure if this one's gonna make it this might be a practice <coughs> round <laughs> mm -mm. it was a great one i don't know what you're talking about why are you judging so hard have some compassion <coughs> do you have a fun fact here it comes, <laughs> fun fact, I'm gonna give you a real fun fact because this show needs something to pick it up right now. Fun fact! <coughs> Put this whole thing on YouTube. <coughs> Kidding. When it comes to breeding and nesting, Gen 2 penguins have been dubbed one of the more romantic seabirds in the animal kingdom. Gen 2 penguins pairs start by building intricate nests of rocks and pebbles together. And individual pebbles may be given, um, may be shared between potential mates beforehand <laughs> as a sign that they are interested in becoming a breeding pair. <coughs> the nests are then used for laying the eggs in <coughs> during incubation, which lasts for, uh, for 40 days. Males and females work together closely during the process, taking turns incubating the egg and forming long lasting bonds with each other that continue after the chick has hatched. That's so cute. So monogamous birds? Um, no, they're not monogamous, but they'll they'll love each other still. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, sometimes they're monogamous. So they're not all they're times. polygamous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Bird, yeah. Birds are polygamous. And they give each other pebbles as a sign of like, I would like to have sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> It's that girl. I know. I kind of would like to see how that is given, just because it's like. It's, how... pro it's probably like. <laughs> yeah. Are they? Yeah. Are they rolling the pebble? It must be. <laughs> Can they pick it up somehow? Or maybe with their thing, and then drop it down in front of them. And then I wonder what happens. I wonder if they decline or take the pebble as a acceptance for breeding. <laughs> they go and sit on it, rub on it, and they're like, yes. And then they just become <clears throat> real great friends while they're baby. Make, making a baby. <laughs> That's cute. That's so cute. I like that. Gen 2 penguins. Gen 2. 
Gen 2, yeah. Like Generation 2. G-E-N-T-O-O. Gen 2. Gen 2. Gen 2. Gen 2. Gen 2. I love fried chicken. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Do you want some? Yeah. Really? No, we had chicken today. Yeah. Oh, let's go get taco stuff. Or maybe we order in. Okay, let's order in. <laughs> Guys, let us know what you have been eating lately in the comments section below. Let us know uh, if you want different content than today's <laughs> I don't think you do. I think today was a great episode. We hit on a lot of points. I got really episode. fucking lit. And yeah, I'm high now and I'm chilling. But I'm sativa high and I'm chilling. Yeah, and hybrid. Hybrid. Oh, oh what's yeah. What's your shatter? Is your shatter sativa? sativa? It's oh, day wow. tripper. It's called day tripper. Wow, what made you get a sativa? Wanting to smoke in the day. It's literally called day tripper. Oh, wow. I know, but you're just like such a... Indica guy, but... The, the the levity, the high, and the density from Shatter is, like, enough. You only smoke in because cause you need to get the fucking tranquilizer, you know? You right. can't have sativa weed. Nice. <clears throat> Got you. Yeah. Maybe sativa dom hybrid once in a while. If we're at a party trying to take it to a different level. We doing recently, some research. We were recently on Doing the, weed research. We were recently on the 420 um, uh, rollers room. Roller round table round table Thank with you. the american <laughs> slacker podcast yeah so if you want to hear more of us and our uh knowings our nonsense. <laughs> nonsense if you like this nonsense you might like that nonsense uh, see both of us broke it so you said at the beginning you said don't we're look not gonna do it but i caught, I, I caught you once you started it, I couldn't unsee it, and we're so hosty. <laughs> <coughs> I don't think this is hosty. I think if this is hosty, we're doing a bad job. <laughs> I would not agree with that assessment. I think we're doing a great job. Thank you. We broke the dragon head for the people. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> I honestly wanted to give it away. <laughs> and then you just killed it. <laughs> it's okay, don't be sorry. It was probably me. I was going like this. Yeah, you big bird. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a dragon. <laughs> you were like, you don't need that other bitch ass dragon. You have me, baby. <laughs> You don't need this. I was giving too much attention to the dragon. Now this has turned into like an ego male dominant version. I was trying to make her feel better and now it's flipped on me. Like, <laughs> I don't know what. I got so high this episode, guys. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. Be careful. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This grinder is probably the dopest grinder I think we've had. It looks really nice when you open it and see your ground weed. It's like in a little mm, nice cubby. Seven pipe, seven pipe grinder. Fuck, it's gold. Oh, triple deck, triple layer. Fuck around and got a triple play up. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Anyway, good times. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you. We're we're gonna we're gonna step it up. <laughs> <laughs> this was our first one back after three weeks. We already yeah. admit that. Yeah, we did. We'll call this the re warm up. The re warm up. Thanks for sticking with us through our re warm up. We're it's always a good now. hang. It's always good hang. It's kind of just like we feel like we'll you're hanging. We'll probably do one again tomorrow. We, so. we imagine that you could just put this on in a room and let these play, and you're pretty much hanging out with us. Yeah. You know, so, so. We love you. Love you. Be well. Fucking. Be loved. Be love, put it out in the world, become it, and uh. Be love. Home. Boom, 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 Oh, <laughs>
Thanks for letting us be silly. Of course, they fucking loved it, Win. <clears throat> okay, good times. Bye.